Unfortunately, the issues that affect men often get little attention, are unknown or deemed unimportant. But men's issues do matter. They affect many lives, and it's important that we not only acknowledge them, but as a society do something about them. What follows are a number of issues you should be aware of, because men's issues matter. Yes, it is. So why are nearly 50% of domestic violence victims denied care and resources? Men who have suffered from domestic violence have extremely limited options and little to no community support. They can go to a homeless shelter, assuming there's any space there, which as the homeless population grows becomes less and less likely, just to be turned out the next day to return to exactly the same home situation they left. Homeless shelters do not offer the necessary targeted services domestic violence shelters do, and can often be violent in their own right. So we as forward-thinking and compassionate beings cringe at the idea of sending battered women to a general homeless shelter, but it's fine to send battered men there. Domestic violence shelters are not standalone entities. They partner with community health, legal services, the police, social workers, and housing offices. They are zoned, inspected, government approved, and intended to provide both short and long-term care plans through referrals. Criticism of advocacy for more men's domestic violence shelters, or any at all, often ends with, why don't you just do it yourself? As though it were that easy. Aaron Pitsy and Earl Silverman could tell you why it isn't that easy. Well, Earl can't. After successfully opening the only dedicated men's shelter in Canada, he was forced to close its doors because of lack of financial backing and took his own life shortly thereafter. And Aaron Pitsy? After a lifetime career of working with families to address family violence, the woman who is often credited with creating the domestic violence shelter model and opening the first in the world was met with threats and violence when she turned her attention to opening a men's shelter and publicly advocating for male victims of family violence. The ugly reality is that the people in positions of power we need to sign on, fund, approve, just don't care about battered men right now. They're seeing through the microscope of women as victims and don't look up to see the children and men bruised and bloody standing just outside their field of vision. And we need them to look up. And that means we need you to. Because you and your family and your social circle may be the counselors and mayors and legal representatives and police officers who someday find that piece of paper in front of them to sign on, to open a men's shelter and give battered men the same care and compassion we already give battered women. To give men the same chance to rebuild and heal themselves and their families. Yours could be the deciding vote or signature or donation. If you care about battered women and you care about the children affected by witnessing or experiencing this violence, if family issues matter, then men's issues have to matter too. Men's issues matter. Is homelessness a men's issue? Oh gosh darn it, I forgot. Men had no issues, but allow me to take a couple of minutes of your time to contend that. Let's start with pointing out the single fact easiest to observe and prove. And that is that men are the majority of the homeless. How much of a majority? Well, depending where on the globe you look and who you ask, the estimates range from 60 to up to 80%. The U.S. Integrity Council on Homelessness estimates that of the chronically homeless, 75% are male. One third of those are veterans. In case you are wondering, 97% of the homeless vets are male. In Australia, roughly two thirds of the homeless sleeping rough are men, even though they are 56% of the homeless according to the statistics. In the UK, in 2011, the housing charity crisis found that 84% of the hidden homeless are male. In the latest chain, Combined Homelessness and Information Network figures suggest that 9 out of 10 people sleeping rough are men. 
Of course, there are many reasons for this, and though I can't go through all of them in a short little segment of a collaboration video, I can list a few. There is a big lack of domestic violence shelters for battered men. According to Mankind Initiative in UK Refuges and Safe Houses, there are 33 spaces dedicated to male victims of domestic violence, of which 18 are for gay males only, compared to around 4,000 spaces reserved for females. Programs dedicated to supporting veterans are severely underfunded. There is lack of services for men with mental illness. There is a lack of services for men with drug and alcohol issues. When confronted with the fact that their own research found that the majority of the homeless people who don't receive support for mental health problems, physical health problems, problems with drug use, problems with alcohol, and stopping smoking, are male. The spokesman for Homeless Link in the UK said that homeless men are more likely than women to say they don't need support. And it's a mixed picture in terms of those people saying that they would like help but don't currently get any. I'm going to let that sink in for a bit. Some of them say they don't want help and that's why we don't give them any. By the way, did anyone else notice the pattern of lack of social services or is it just me? Because there is a bigger picture here. Now. Not only are men the majority of the homeless, not only are the services that should be there to help them seriously lacking, but society as a whole has a very different attitude towards different people stuck in the same situation. It's understandable that women with children get special services, although those should be for parents in general, and any poor single father will tell you that's not the case. But even single women with no kids get special treatment despite being the minority. There is a tangible lack of empathy towards men who are going through rough times. Just like other men's issues, very few people want to talk about or publicize that men are the majority of the homeless and need help. The sad fact is that in almost every area where men face hardship, trauma and discrimination, you will see a pattern of avoidance and eye-turning. So in the end, men get hit twice. First, by a system that should have prevented them from hitting rock bottom and didn't. And then, by a society that doesn't care when they do. There's a talk that the system is rigged in such a way that it favors men. In other words, it takes care of men more than it takes care of women. And that's because there are more men in positions of power than women, obviously. However, this is patently false when you look at the facts. Where mortality and health are concerned, you will not find any evidence that supports this claim. On average, women live longer than men, where the main cause of death for both men and women from the age of 50 is cancer. Now, according to every official organization you can find, such as the American Cancer Society, the World Cancer Research Fund International, or the National Institution of Health, they all report that when gender-specific cancers are involved, male cancer research and treatment is terribly underfunded compared to research for female cancers. So you can find all kinds of sources confirming that even though women are 20% to 50% more likely to die from breast cancer than men from prostate cancer, for example, breast cancer research receives from 200% to 400% more funds. Another example for gender disparity is when domestic violence is concerned. Although men get injured less than women, there are still many who get seriously injured. Yet there are almost no funds and no preventive programs or shelters to protect and treat men. And in this case, 99% of all the funds go specifically to women. And of course, the same could be said about mental health treatment for victims of rape, where female rape victims receive millions of dollars annually, and a lot of that money goes for prevention and treatment. Male victims, however, get virtually no funds, and not only there are no prevention programs, the number of male, that's men and boy, rape victims is for all intents and purposes unknown, as in some places males cannot be considered the victims of rape, and therefore there is no research to find out what the actual numbers are. In places where they do conduct this research, it has been shown that these numbers are quite significant, and yet no programs are available. 
Everyone suffers at times from stereotyping and having assumptions made about them just because of the way they were born. Men are not unique in this area, but there are some uniquely harmful expectations put upon men that are worth bringing to light and fighting against. Men throughout history have been expected to be more stoic and reserved than women. They have often been shamed by society at large for expressing emotions such as fear or grief. Recently, some have referred to this type of masculinity as backwards and have called for men to be more open about their feelings. This is indeed a step forward. However, there is a downside that any man who is content remaining with a more stoic outlook is then branded as toxic by proponents of this new type of manliness. Far from being free to choose their lifestyle, men find themselves stuck between a rock and a hard place, unsure which set of behaviors to go with as both receive harsh criticism. Boys are taught from a young age to never hit girls. Whilst this is totally commendable, girls receive far less instructing in this area. Whether it's the White Ribbon Campaign, which holds special assemblies just for male students to teach them to not be violent, or the Duluth Model, which defines domestic violence as an act done by men to women. Society does not believe that women are equally capable of being physically abusive. Numerous studies and experiments have documented that when a man is aggressive to a woman in public, onlookers will intervene almost immediately. However, if the roles are reversed, onlookers will remain silent or possibly even ridicule the man for having been beaten. Any violence done towards any one of us should be taken seriously and dealt with accordingly. Men are also seen as uniquely predacious when it comes to sex. For example, in countries like the United Kingdom, it is not possible for a woman to be convicted of raping a man. Rape is a crime that only a man can commit against an unwilling victim. Women receive lighter sentences for the same acts, even against children, because society does not take the damage they can inflict seriously. Deborah Lefebvre, for example, was convicted of having sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old student and was not sent to jail on the grounds that she was too pretty to be incarcerated. Men don't deserve to be treated any more harshly by the criminal justice system than people of color do. We should have a level playing field to assess all accusations on a case-by-case -case basis. I believe equality in this area is one of the most important issues we face in the modern day. Workplace Fatalities Men make up 95% of those who die on the job. Transportation incidents lead to death toll, followed by falling, contact with objects or equipment, exposure to harmful substances or environments, and even murder. In 2014, 4,454 men died on the job, compared to 367 women. Now, many who are versed in this disparity contend that this may be one of the reasons that men tend to earn more money than women over their lifetimes. The numbers of workplace deaths have diminished over the last 20 years, but there is still a stark contrast in the numbers of men versus women who die on the job. Now, many factors may be the cause of this, including society pushing men to be breadwinners, men being more willing to take risky jobs, employers being less likely to hire women for risky jobs, or even employers caring more for the safety of their female employees. No matter what the underlying causes are, this issue should be addressed because men's issues matter. We live in a society which doesn't necessarily find men to be disposable, but values their lives less than women's. We see this whenever there is a disaster, when news outlets will emphasize the female victims to tug at our heartstrings. When it comes to government policies which are gendered towards women, despite men suffering almost equally in some cases, we see it for the loss of human life in wars which is overwhelmingly men or for where men who are victims are forced to suck it up due to a lack of support structures. For the many more men who commit suicide, with most of society barely paying attention unless it happens to someone close to them, which also extends to other men's issues like homelessness, blindness to the glass cellar, etc. 
There is also an automatic in-group bias, which is in women's favor for both sexes. This is represented by many in society and also in government. For example, with an overall court bias in women's favor, that's six times bigger than racial bias in the US, which is often ignored. Women's issues being taken seriously, whilst men's issues being ignored and fought against. Where there are departments dedicated to women's needs, from the Department of Women's Health to UN Women, but none of the sort for men's health or men's rights. Let's try a quick test now. With only the information of a person's sex and nothing else, who would you be more inclined to save if you were put into that situation, the man or the woman? According to this study, we're more likely to protect women than we are men, which should come as no surprise to most people. Does this attitude seep into government policy? The summary of this study also summarizes this issue rather well. We're more likely to sacrifice a man than a woman when it comes to both saving the lives of others and in pursuing our own self-interests. Likewise, we're more likely to care about women and their needs, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, shouldn't this equally apply to both sexes? We are talking about the other half of the population after all. Please feel free to mirror this video or share it on Facebook and Twitter.